Good morning, y'all. Old Hippie here. I've got uh, one of the stripers from uh, yesterday's catch. I've got a few over here to claim, but I'm going to do one on camera. I have a, uh, <laughs> I have a son of my eyes. I've got the uh, camera pointing more at what I'm going to be working on than on me. That's what's important, but I've got a, a special subscriber who's been following me for a while. And uh, every video that I do, let me get my knife. And it doesn't matter, I hope you can hear me. It doesn't matter whether it's a long video, short video. Uh, she always likes and comments always pleasant comments makes me feel good anyway this is for her Tammy I appreciate you I'm gonna do the cleaning portion you've already seen the catching portions I'm gonna do the cleaning portions then I'll do a cooking portions if this runs too long uh, I'll do the cooking portion in a second part anyway this is the way that I clean them there's a there's a bunch of different ways that you can do it but this has been uh, the fastest way that I've found and the easiest way it's just a cheap electric carving knife from Walmart you can get them for about $9.95 on sale don't spend a whole lot of money on them don't go buy no filleting knife a bubba unless you got lots of money just waste this will do the job first thing I do I take that knife and I angle it back towards my hand just slightly, and right behind the gills, I'm going to go down until I feel backbone. All the way down into the stomach, just like that. Let the knife do the work. Don't push it. It's not a saw, and it's electric. It'll do the work. Now, I'm going to take that blade. I'm going back into that cut I just made until I feel that backbone. When I do, I'm going to slightly start putting it to the tail and hit the button. And I'll flatten it out and follow that bone. You'll feel it all the way to the tail. You've got to get to the rib bone first. Again, don't, don't push your knife because these things are not a tank. But if you let it, let it fall there a minute, it'll get to them. And when it does, you'll feel it. I'm feeling now. Now I'm just going to follow that back bone. <laughs> As you can see, I went through that backbone, and that ain't good. We're going to flip him over and see if we can salvage this. Yes, we can. There's one fillet. Set that aside. Now, being that I cut through that backbone up here on that there to salvage that one, I'm going to probably go to the tail end. This is not the way to do it, but to save meat, we can get by doing this and still get okay. way we don't lose nothing there except my pride <laughs> and it's all good now you see that we got pretty much all the meat off of that you could eat the throat not a fan you can also fry that backbone if you want to now I'm gonna show you how to get that meat off the skin or the skin off the meat same thing I get a hold of that tail go down and just push it through the skin let the knife do the work there's your filet that ain't nothing but your skin left there I keep the neighborhood cats around here just happy 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 I dump that back there in my field the buzzards come by pick it pretty clean pretty quick 
But being that I butchered this one up, I wasn't gonna do but one on one on camera, but I'm gonna pull a bigger one out. I'm gonna pull a bigger one out and show you what how it's supposed to be done. And all I gotta do now is come in here and take this rib out. If you got a red meat, this one ain't too bad at all. But if, if you do, you just take that knife and just slightly cook. We're gonna see it on the big ones. This, this small one's pretty clean. He'll eat just fine like that right there. And this is why I like the uh, the small striper better than I do the big striper. A lot cleaner meat. All right, let me grab another one right quick. Bear with me. I guess I should add that these fish as soon as they come out of water, go on ice. And they stay on ice. I pack ice on top of them after I get home in the evening and do my cleaning the next morning. It does a couple of things. First of all, it gives me an afternoon of being beat up on the water all day long, not have to fool with cleaning fish. Second of all, it firms this flesh up and makes this job so much easier. All right, we're gonna do it this time without too much talking. I'm gonna go in towards my hand so I feel the backbone. Down through the belly. Back in my cut. Angle it out. Start down that backbone. Right on out the tail. That's the way it's supposed to be done. Now we get to the other side. Like this, getting through them ribs is the hardest part of it. There you go, two fillets. I don't think I eat, in, need any of that, do y'all? If you want it, let me know, I'll see it to you. <laughs> None of these are real big striper. We're, they're, they're all underneath the uh, slot that we have on Smith Mountain. Now you can see some of that red meat I was talking about. That's good. That, that way I can show you how to get it off of there. Whoa. Ho, ho, ho. Almost had a man down. Y'all want that? I don't. All right, let's get this other skin off. The secret here is don't get too deep. Now you see that real dark line? That's the one that's where the, the nasty flavor is coming from. But I try to even get this top layer of red off too. I've fried it with it on it before. Sometimes you can slightly detect it, sometimes you can't. I just go the extra tip and try to get it off as much as I can. You're not going to get every piece of this off. However, you greatly improve the flavor of your fish if you'll get this center line out here. That's the one that's got the nastiness to it. 
Here, here's a pretty easy way to get that out of there. We hadn't even took the rib off of that one yet, have we? No, we hadn't. Let's get that out of the way. I wouldn't talk to the camera. <laughs> excuses, excuses. If I wouldn't talk to the camera, I'd already be done with this. There's a little bit more we can trim off right there. Again, just little, little, little bits at a time. That'll help a bunch. Now just follow that line right down. Now, if you was wanting a whole filet, you can painstakingly cut that out with a little V-notch and kind of zip it out of there, but I get everything done in frying size, so I'm not going to fry a whole filet. It just ain't going ain't to do it. Now, we can see where that dark line is, and I want to save some of this white meat here. So I'm going to turn that dark meat to where I know it's right in, underneath that away. You just come in there at kind of a little V. Most of that comes out. We got the biggest part of it. That'll do it. Turn loose now, you have rascal. All right. We're going to stop there, and I'll get off camera to finish up what I got over here. And then we'll move into the kitchen and start making us some tacos. We're going to do uh, street style tacos tonight. Anyway, y'all stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching this far. And Tammy, special thanks to you for being such a loyal subscriber. I appreciate people like you. I appreciate all of you. Sure do. Here's one more step in the cleaning process that I need to add. It's important. When I got through getting these out there, while I'm cleaning them out there, I bring them in the house and I run water over them. Just cold water. Don't, don't want no warm water on these at, at any time. You can already see how nasty that water's gotten and they haven't been agitated at all. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to start kind of like washing clothes gently. What I'm doing, I'm loosening any, any scales, any tidbits, some of the blood, but you see how this water, it's got a sheen on it. That's fat. And a lot of your funky flavor will come from that. I'm just going to drain that. Uh oh, that one kind of run away there. I'm going to hit it with cold water again.
And I'm going to agitate again. Water's still a little bit dirty, but it looks better than that first bowl did. That's looking pretty clear right there. What I'll do at this point, I'll cut that off. And I'm going to put these in the refrigerator. It's best to let them set overnight before you bag them to freeze them, but don't freeze them in this water. Dip them out of this water, put them in a Ziploc, and cover them with fresh water. Get all the air out and stick them in the freezer and you're done. But I'm going to let these set for a couple hours and then we're going to cook some of it tonight. And it looks like this video is probably going to be running a little bit long, Tammy, so I'm going to have the cooking video in another section. But I'm going to make sure that everybody knows that that section is going to be for you as well and anybody else that cares to watch. I hope I taught you something. Again, there's a, a gazillion different ways to do these. I'll pick all them little tidbits off and get rid of them as I clean them up for my final. But uh, this is the way that I do them. It's fast, it's efficient, and it gives you some really good meals. Anyway, I appreciate you clicking on and watching. Give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Be sure and stay tuned for the cooking portion of this. I'll probably have that up later on this evening or first thing in the morning. Appreciate y'all. God bless you in tight lines.